to another thrilling episode of Tube Amp Theta with your host, Terry, at D-Lab. And this episode of Tube Amp Theater will be building a Princeton 5F2 amplifier. And as you know, Tube Amp Theater offers you fun, fine wines, tube amps, and toy robots. Here we go. So here's the kit. Got a nice chrome chassis with laser engraved etching on it. Okay. Even got the little brass ground plate. Got some classic tone transformers, power and output. And these are the upgraded transformers. Tubes, a whole bunch of miscellaneous parts, and a power cord. And inside of the chassis is a pre-stuffed eyelet board. So really, all we gotta do is wire it up. But I noticed a few things that I'm gonna change first to make, make this a, a little more successful but before we begin the build, there's a few changes that I want to make. A few to the chassis and a few to the components being used. Let me show you what all that is. So the first thing I want to comment on are the tube sockets. So here's the sockets that came with the amp. These are obviously a Chinese made socket, okay? So the metal quality is not the greatest. And what happens with these things is the tube pins in here start losing strength and they do not retain the tube properly all right so let's take the old 5y3 put him in there you imagine now this is hanging upside down in your amp okay so when these guys lose strength and you get some vibration a little wobble from moving it around playing it these eventually loosen up and fall right out okay the other thing i don't like about these is these are a surface mount socket okay and what that does is it offsets your tube a little over a quarter of an inch from the chassis okay which will allow the tube to wobble easier and of course fatigue these contacts sooner so what I like to put in these is the old style sockets that mount from the rear like Fender used to use right and I just happen to have these beautiful octal amphenols with silver contacts and they mount from the rear okay so if you're building a high quality amp you want high quality sockets right so check this out if I can get it lined up now push them in that takes some power to get them guys in okay also this porcelain is going to line up fairly flush with the chassis so now your tube is going to be seated closer to the chassis therefore reducing vibration and wear and tear to the socket. Let's take a look at the 9-pin socket that was supplied for the 12AX7 tube. First thing I noticed that I don't like at all is the insulator is made out of two pieces. And this piece kind of floats. So you have a gap in here and you can actually see the pins in there. The other thing is, see how loose the insulator is in the housing? It's not very well supported. So what this is going to do is allow vibration, which of course will fatigue the tube socket. And you've got a gap in here that contaminants can get into and corrode pins or cause some noise issues. Okay. So the general construction of this socket sucks. All right. So here's what I'm going to replace it with. Belden makes these nice Michaelex sockets. Okay. So look at the construction of this. All right. And this is what I routinely use in my boutique amp builds and classic fender amplifier repair. See how well it's supported? You see that the 
inside does not move at all. It's very well built. And this little socket will guarantee you years of good performance with low noise. So that covers the components that I'm going to change out. Now let's take a look at chassis layout. Now yeah, I put these sockets here just for demonstration purposes only. They're actually going to end up in the garbage can when I'm done, right? So the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you the placement of the speaker output jack, right? So this is for a early Fender Champ, and you'll see that this is a speaker output jack which is located between the 12AX7 and the 6V6. It's actually only about an inch and a half away from the 12AX7, and then you envision the wiring coming up from the eyelet board to that tube, they cross right by the leads of the speaker output. That's a big no-no, okay? That's going to cause feedback and noise and all kinds of trouble. All right, so I've already talked to the owner, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it over here between the rectifier and the output tube. And if you look at later Fender Champs, obviously Fender figured that out, and they also moved that location over here and got it away from the preamp, all right? So the other thing that we're going to do is since he has this classic tone upgraded output transformer, it actually has taps for 4, 8, and 16 ohms, all right? So instead of having one jack over here, we're going to have three. So here's a schematic of the new output transformer. So we're going to use the 5K since it is a 6V6. And then I'll have the three output jacks, which I'm going to line up right up here between the rectifier and the output tube. Here's another chassis issue. They have just a rubber grommet here for your grounded three-prong type power cord to go through. Now you envision the round lead is going to pass through this hole. And how are you going to retain that? How is that cord going to stay in that chassis? In the old days, when they had a two conductor, they tied a knot in it, okay? You really can't do that with these modern cords. So what I'm going to do is add a cord restraint. So the grommet goes, the restraint goes in, and the cord will stay in place. All right, the other thing I need to cover is the new power transformer. This is an upgraded classic tone transformer to give this champ a little more output, all right? It's actually rated about 650 volt center tap, 70 milliamps. It actually bolts right up in that spot, just like the original one did. However, the high voltage coming off of this is gonna be higher, and therefore, your 6V6 is gonna run hotter if you use the stock 470 ohm cathode resistor, all right? So when we get it done, and initially power it up, I'm going to measure that bias. And if it's too high, which I'm sure it will be, we're going to have to swap that resistor with a different value to get the 6V6 under control. Now, so I may have front. mentioned or called it out as a champ in the video. Anytime I see a Fender amp that has a single 6V6, I think of a champ, all right? So if I slipped up and said champ, sorry, okay? That's the way it is, okay? D-Lab does make mistakes, right? But anyway... This is a great the first thing I'm going to do before any components go in here is drill and install the three new speaker output taps. So we have 4, 8, 16 ohm. So here is where the three speaker jacks will sit. Okay. I came down about a half inch off this top lip. This one's centered, and these two are three quarters of an inch from that center. I did not do them vertically because if you do that, you'll find that one of your jacks this one down below will collide with the eyelet board. That'd be a critical error because that's right where the high voltage is at. So yeah, they need to go up here. It's a little bit tight, but it's going to function fine. Getting closer. I've got the transformers installed. Controls are there. All right. Here's the eyelet board installed. Wiring's getting ready. All my jacks, etc. Ready to go. Little brass plate up there for a grounding. Here's the three speaker jacks, the Amphenol porcelain sockets, and the Michaelic socket. I'm ready to start wiring it. 
Wiring is underway. I'm going to start with the filament wiring. That's what I always do because they have to be twisted and laced and tucked underneath the sockets so they're out of the way. Then we'll do the high voltage. Then we'll wire up the controls to the eyelet board and of course the rear jacks. So as you can see the build is going well. What I did with these uh, speaker jacks is I positioned them to where all the grounds were facing the same way. And what I'm going to do is put a drop of solder between those two tabs and that'll lock these guys in place. And then my ground runner off the output transformer go to the last lug. The other thing I noticed is that this amp has a tone control, okay? But the funny thing is, is there's no tone caps on the board. You'd expect to see like a 250 puff cap along with this .022 so that your tone pot can sweep those frequencies. I don't see it, so I guess I'll have to add it. So the build is pretty much complete. I ended up doing a couple modifications. Number one, I told you that the tone control didn't have any capacitors on this board. All right, so I did add right there a 500 picofarad cap, which goes up to the tone control, and there's a triple O5 to ground. So those two caps needed to be added to the kit. All right, so that's not a big deal. The other thing I did, if you look right here on the 6V6, you'll see a 560K resistor to ground. That's coming off of pin 5, which is the input to the 6V6, which comes off of that cap. You really need to load that grid slightly to the 6V6, or you'll notice that your amp has a lot of gain problems and maybe even some noise. So this is something that they did later on in fenders. So for another couple pennies, add that resistor. Another thing I need to mention, this here is the 22K resistor that normally goes to your speaker output. It's the source of negative feedback. I did not use that, okay? I normally do not use negative feedback in my amps. If they're properly designed, you don't need it, and the amp will perform much better if you don't. It's checkout time. All right, I've got it on Variac for the initial power up so I can make sure it doesn't draw excessive current. Once that's cool, we're going to hook up my scope and an audio generator and take a look at that output. All right, so what I do is I bring her up on the Variac nice and slow. So there's 50 volts, okay? Monitor the current, the amp is on, and I'm monitoring the bias with this little multimeter, all right? So we're going to let it warm up. And this is kind of wellness check, all right? So as the amp comes up, you should start drawing bias across that 470 ohm resistor, which represents voltage on the meter, right? So look at there. Here she comes. She's ramping up. So this is my way of bringing her up slowly to make sure there's nothing wrong. Keep an eye on that current. Make sure it's under control. It's looking good. Now we're only at about 70 volts. We got about uh, 7 volts across the resistor. Okay, so there's 100 volts. Okay, so at 100 volts, we're seeing what? 16 maybe 17 volts, right? So we take Mr. Calculator and we say, all right, 17 volts divided by 470 ohms, that's 36 milliamps, right? So as I thought, the uh, larger power transformer has thrown the bias off on the 6V6, so we have to remove the 470 and replace it with a higher value to get that current under control. If I were to bring this thing up full bore, it'd probably be well over 45 milliamps. I don't want to chance it. So, we're going to change out the bias resistor. And I'm going to try to do it with this cool isotip soldering iron, which I've never tried on an eyelet board. I actually received this soldering iron from the isotip company because they watch some of my crazy videos and they enjoyed it. So D-Live got a little bonus. Very cool, and look at there. It does a great job on eyelets. 
So here's a quick easy way to set the bias on your amp. First, grab your voltmeter and we're going to measure the plate voltage going to the output tube. I told you this thing really puts out the voltage, huh? Wait till the current draws and she'll come back down. So, say 400 volts, right? 410. Now if you look on the Weber bias calculator online, you would type in class A, 6V6, with that plate voltage, and it's going to tell you that you're looking somewhere around 27 milliamps for this tube to run safely. So the next thing I do is I put my meter in milliamp mode, DC milliamps. My negative lead goes to the chassis. My positive lead goes to the resistor that I'm going to try. And the output of that resistor right goes up here to the cap, which goes to pin 8 of the 6V6. So now we can measure the current right through the tube. So I'll turn him on. Give it some warm up time. Here it comes. Ah, uh, we already missed the target. So that's still running a little too hot. So now we'll try another resistor. And by the way, the first resistor tried was a 750. So let's try a 1K. There we go, 1K resistor. No current. Flip him on. See what we get. Boom! Look at that. 1K it is. I'm going to install it. So I've got the amp fired up. We got the old D Lab dummy old Ramus here, set of eight ohms. We're monitoring that with my oscillating television that I'll show you. This over here is my newest audio generator, a military model, very cool wave tech. I'm coming into the amp with approximately 1.5 kilohertz at say 150 to 200 millivolts. And we're going into the Tektronix scope. Sorry about the creaking, I've got a cheap tripod here, all right? I'll try not to uh, let it creak too much. Anyway, here we go back to the amp. I'm going to reach over here, bring up the gain, okay? So there it is. You can't see what the scope's doing, and I'm going to show you that in a second. But I do have a sine wave, so let me pan over to Scoperino. There we are. A little creaking for you. So there it is, okay? There's the old sine wave. Now I'm going to crank up the treble. There we go. Bam! Look at that. You can almost make a square wave out of this guy. Now I'm going to bring back that treble so you can see the influence of that. Okay. Once again, there's a treble at approximately 1.5 kilohertz. Now if I were to go up in frequency, go ahead and kind of hear that out of the dummy load now. So here's my gain. There's that treble. Troubles all the way up. You see there? Nice little square waves. Bam! So this thing is going to be a screamer.
right, so a successful amp build in D-Lab. Although this was not one of my designs, the kit actually went together rather well. Yeah, there's a couple little bugs, but that's part of the challenge of building tube amps. The thing you have to keep in mind is use quality components. Don't skimp out on those tube sockets, transformers, capacitors, etc., or you'll be kicking yourself later. Why do I do this? It's fun, right? I get to listen to rock and roll, I get to solder, play with tubes, robots, and entertain you. So I hope of what I do is of value to you. Thanks for tuning in.